Good evening, good evening. It is Tuesday and it's time for Vapor Scene on, getting my titles ready, Vapor Charles TV. Titles! Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vapor, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, it is Tuesday the 23rd of April. Where is it all going? It is just flying past us, is it not? Um, soon be Easter and then it'll be Christmas. And then where are we going to be 2014? Just like that. Bam. Yes, it is 23rd of April 2013. You're watching Vapor Trolls TV and this is Vapor Scene. We have got a fair bit coming up in the next 29 minutes. <laughs> and we're going to start with um, the... Uh, Ubiquitous, the tumultuous Twitter bomb. Twitter bomb. Retweet. Yes, indeed. If you were watching Andy's show on Saturday, you will have gone through the uh, Twitter bomb process, maybe for the first time. Maybe you've been doing it since we started doing this. Who knows? But if you missed it, or if you'd like a recap, this is what happened. Now, let me show you who we're going to be sending this to. The Daily Mail, Guy News, Chris Evans. Now, the reason why we chose those three people, two people, one person, three, two organisations, was obviously Chris Evans has got a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday show and he's on Twitter quite a lot. So this will be a good experiment to see if we can reach out with the same method. Also you will notice when the tweets appear and I see they have in chat, thank you very much, that um, I haven't used the EU eSig ban hashtag. That is because unfortunately because we have been so successful in getting our message out there it has been classed rather unfairly I think, as spam. Some celebrities and some news organisations do use spam filters to stop spam getting through them, to, to cut the clutter basically. So the, the tweets we are sending you it, are, are, you know, please do send those to those three organisations, but that URL to that video is yours. It's yours to send to whoever you like, but please, the people who are watching this, whether you're watching live or on a replay, please do tweet those organisations and someone I listen to every morning and, and appreciate his hard work trying to get lots of people's messages out there. And I hope if if he if he's his researchers are watching this, that you know you just saw the video live on the show. We're very passionate about this and we don't want it to happen because we know what's going to happen if it does and nobody wants that to happen. So uh, there's Twitter. Oh, there's 53 new tweets. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, cool. Well, that's kicking off nicely. Going. Good. Thank you very much, chat. Thank you. Um, thank you all for your lovely comments about the video. It was great fun putting it together and... Um, that is exactly what Smoke Without Fire aims to do, is to get our voices out there. So, oh boy, I need some alcohol and some nicotine. Yeah. If it's your first Twitter bomb, um, please do retweet the ones that you see um, because then that multiplies things by the power of us you know and um, 
a lot of people talk about being in Twitter jail and you haven't really experienced a, a Twitter bomb until you've been in Twitter jail. Twitter jail is where you tweet too much, you retweet and then it, it locks you down. It, it has a limit to the uh, amount of tweets you can send uh, in a, a part, a portion of an hour. They put it in a strange way on, on Twitter. But um, you are let out on good behaviour and then you can start again. And let's say if you have a company or something um, that's got another email address, there's no reason why that email address, because it's another entity, can't have another Twitter address. See where I'm going with that? So uh, there are my tweets gone. They are sent. And uh, I thank you all. Twitter bomb. Retweet. So that is what happened last Saturday. The tweets were sent to the Daily Mail, the Sky Channel, and to Chris Evans, who I also listen to uh, in the mornings when I'm on my way to various places. Uh, and I also listen to Jeremy Vine uh, and Ken Bruce on the good old radio too. And I was disappointed in the piece that was done yesterday on the Jeremy Vine show. And I'm sure that Mr. Dawn will be touching on this tomorrow in VT Talk. So I won't say too much. However, it was disappointing. I have to get it out there. Anyway, so who's going to be the recipient of the next Twitter bomb? I don't know. I don't know if Andy knows yet. Do anyone know? Because we're wanting you to make suggestions. So go to the uh, Red Trials TV, Facebook or Twitter and uh, let us know who you think we should be sending it to next. And if you still follow the hashtag um, EU eSigBan, you'll still see loads and loads of tweets that are coming through using that hashtag. And as I said in pre-show, that is spam. Spicy pork and ham, indeed. Created in the 1940s to give the airmen and the uh, US Army something different to eat apart from bully beef. Spam. Hmm. Anyway, that's enough about spam. <laughs> Let's move on uh, to uh, Show Is Yours, but uh, don't forget to tune in on Saturday, by the way, to Andy's show for the next Twitter bomb, and we'll do the same thing next week with the retweet. And uh, we're going to move on now, and we're going to go to this week's Show Is Yours gallery. Did you send a picture in? It'll be here. And now it's time for Show Is Yours, sponsored by Flavor Art UK.
show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. And that was this week's show is yours gallery. Nice pictures. Uh, there's really, really good ones there. Uh, and uh, if you would like to uh, have a chance at winning a bottle of juice, you need to send your pictures to vaporscene at vapordwells.tv. Get them to me by Tuesday, 12 p.m., and you will see your picture in that week's show. Fingers crossed, because sometimes I'm not at home and I need to get home first, re-edit the video and uh, get it all ready for you. But nine times out of ten, you'll see it the same week if you get it to me by the Tuesday of the show. And this week's winner, looking for the right thing to press, is Pete Dermody or Dermody. Um, which is quite an apt name, really, Dermody, uh, with his Star Wars interpretations there. <laughs> Love the lightsaber. Uh, congratulations, Pete. I will be in contact with you after the show, and I will tell you how you get hold of your juice. Yes, I must click on my clock. Ooh, how long we got? Yes, we've got a few, a few seconds before we go to the ads. So I'll just give you a quick update I've got from Andy. Uh, on the Kickstarter campaign, uh, currently £3,935 in pledges, 39% funded with 111 backers. And we've still got 33 days to go, so well done. Uh, and we will be reaching that target, I am sure, and exceeding it, uh, which will all make for some excellent work that we can put in. So, let us go to the ads and when we come back I've got a bit of VT that I did last Wednesday out on location. Hmm. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Now it's back to Vaporseam on Vapor Trails TV. Vaporseam is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, the UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And welcome back to part two. Um, I was busy uploading last week's show, last week, strangely enough, uh, and in our Skype chat, uh, Tim happened to mention that there was a vape meet going on at a local pub, which is 15, mi uh, 15 miles, 15 minutes uh, away from me. So uh, I bundled along last Wednesday with my camera and my tripod and lights and microphones and stuff, 
uh, and I met with the, uh, the vapors. And this is what happened. Well, what can I say? It's Mark Van Basten, and I'm here at the Angler's Rest, uh, and I've come for a vape meet, and we're going to speak to a few vapors. So uh, let's go inside. Follow me, because we are going inside to the Angler's Rest. And we've got a, a good bunch of guys here who have come for a vape meet. Uh, we've got Rusty. Say hello, Rusty. Hey, you all right? And all the guys, and they've all recorded a little bit of video, uh, and we're going to see that very shortly. So, um, see you in a moment. My name is Russell Lord. I've been using electronic cigarettes for about four years. Um, I used to smoke 45, 50 roll ups a day, uh, no filters to get all the goodness. Uh, Hi, my name's William Butterworth. Um, I started smoking seven years ago when I came back from Iraq. Hey up, it's Chris Burks, e Siggy man. Um, I've been vaping for over four years now, I'm one of old timers. And it, was, it wasn't affecting my health or anything like that, but I had a child at age 42, you know, I'm 46 now, and I figured out by the time he's 18, I'll be 60. Both my parents didn't get to 60 due to smoking related illness. I'm uh, 73 year old now and I've been smoking since I was 12. I was smoking up to the age of 68. Hi, my name's Tim and I started vaping because I was a smoker. I smoked about 40 roll-ups a day. I tried all the NRTs, everything. Nothing worked. And then one person, I was a school teacher at the time, one person fetched in an electronic cigarette. It wasn't a particularly great one. I had one puff on that and I was converted. Since then, at the start, I was smoking over 40 a day. Um, then it went down to 20, then 10. And then I was introduced to this. Hello, uh, my name's Richard. Uh, I started vaping six months ago after trying everything to stop smoking from uh, Zyban, Champix, uh, Every, everything, anything you can think on, I've tried it. I started vaping within really a day. I didn't bother with cigarettes. Uh, I just found them better, taste better. I felt a lot better. The last seven weeks I've noticed a big improvement in my health, my chest, not wheezing at night when I go to sleep. So the EU ban would push me back to cigarettes. And basically, I don't want that. I'm a lot happier vaping in like like-minded people, enjoying it and feeling hell of a lot better for it. I'm Harry Jeeves. Um, I own and run Jeeves Brewery with my father Peter and uh, we've recently taken on this pub, the Angler's Rest. Um, we're both very in favour of uh, vaping. The fact that I've got electronic cigarettes keeps me away from smoking constantly and damaging my health. I had to stop smoking because of health reasons, I had a few heart attacks and what have you. Tried every other alternative, NRTs, you name it, I tried them all, nothing worked. Nothing like that at all worked, didn't do it for me at all. After a couple of days using this, it helped me and it stopped me smoking normal cigarettes. Still get the same hit of nicotine. And somebody introduced me to these vapors, these. And I've been smoking these now for just over three years. I have one or two complaints, blood pressure, stuff like that. Um, I was having trouble with uh, my breathing, um, felt out of energy all the time, and I heard about a safer alternative, which is vaping. Um, really enjoy it, meet loads of new people. Uh, they allow it in the local pub, so it's great for me. and. Uh, I don't have to go out in the cold and feel like a leper anymore. So, um, yeah, an EU ban would be really bad for me. Uh, the social side of it, love it. Go out regular now and meet other like-minded people that realise what a good thing this is. 
I can change the flavours that I want, you know, to different flavours. I can actually uh, enjoy smoking for the first time in a long time, you know, after 23 years. And apparently the European Union wants to take that away from me. You know, they want to keep cigarettes on sale, but they want to ban these electronic cigarettes, you know, which have kept me from smoking for nearly four years. Been to the doctors a few times. He asked me if I still smoked. I said, no, I'd stopped smoking. He says, well, do you smoke at all? I said, I smoke the electronic cigarette. I discovered electronic cigarettes and used them ever since. That's over four years ago. A full uh, clean bill of health from my doctor just two days ago. Heart, lungs, everything working perfectly without medication, I might add. I'm on no medication whatsoever for blood pressure or anything. Cigarette wise, no, not for me, mate. Uh, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to stop doing this. I enjoy doing this. I know a lot of people at work who have seen me, they've started, they've all stopped smoking, they love it. This is an 18 milligram uh, liquid that I've got in the top. This one's my son, Jordan. He's been smoking since he was 12, 13. I've been smoking since I was 12. I've been smoking since I was 13. I would recommend it to all public places. It is not smoking. Doctor said to me, that's absolutely brilliant. He says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to knock you off the computer as a smoker. I've personally never smoked or even tried vaping or e-cigarettes. My health in the last few years has been absolutely brilliant. I still take tablets like when you get older, you take tablets. But I don't spit, I don't cough. However, I've grown up with uh, cigarettes in the household. Both my parents have smoked pretty much most of my life, so I appreciate why normal cigarettes have been banned, particularly as they affect other people. Um, so I can see why vaping is particularly good because it's completely harmless to, to others, um, even when you're in the presence of it. My lungs is clearing. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. And if these get banned, I have to maybe go back smoking. Talking about regulating the liquids that we, that we put in our electronic cigarettes, making it such a ridiculously low level that it, it won't be enjoyable. It just won't be enjoyable. Since then, yeah, I've had the old cigarette, but the fact that I've got electronic cigarettes keeps me away from smoking constantly and damaging my health. Kevin here introduced us to these vaping. to vaping. Try it is. Uh, I've never tried stopping smoking before. Try it is, and I've stopped. It's been for a week. As brewers, um, the pub is our business. It's our livelihood and um, pubs are struggling enough as, as it is, but the fact that smoking was banned in pubs a few years ago has, has not helped pubs survive, so the fact that people can come into pubs and use e-cigarettes and, and vape and come back into the pub and socialise and feel comfortable doing that uh, is a good, good thing as far as we're concerned for business. It's because I have kids at home and I needed to stop for their benefit and I've tried patches, I've tried chewing gum, all these things that they reckon help you stop smoking and never worked. I've tried vaping for the first time and I stopped virtually straight away because it's just like, a, to me it feels like a proper cigarette. And that's why I prefer it. And if government banned it. And people have to find alternatives whether they go under the counter, buy black market nicotine, or they start smoking again. That's the, two, that's the only real two alternatives they've got. As for political situation at the moment, um, obviously I'm in favour of it, so any EU uh, problems with banning it, etc., is a real shame. So in Britain, you've got tens of thousands of vapours. Worldwide, you've got millions millions of people might go back to smoking again or buying dodgy nicotine. I think they are trying to suppress something well before it's had a chance to prove itself. Um, 
which I, I think it is in the process of doing and will do and will be proven as a, a really good thing. I would just go straight back to cigarettes, I would think. I think it's a disgrace. The first thing I'd do is go out and buy some more cigarettes. These are the way forward. The EU ban would push me back to cigarettes and basically I don't want that. It's going to make a, a big mistake if they enforce any ban. Which will probably finish me off. That will be the consequence. So there you go. Those were words from the heart from the guys at the Anglers Rest in Warmwell. Um, they don't want an EU ban. We don't want an EU ban. You don't want an EU ban. So you know what to do. We need to keep the pressure up. We need to keep the Twitter bombs up. We need to get your story, our stories up there. Film it on a webcam, on your iPhone, your Android. Send it over to Andy at the uh, SWAF campaign. He will edit it. We'll do some more stuff and we will get there. But we have to get there together. That's the message. Um, so, thanks to all the guys at the Angler's Rest. Thanks to East Iggy Man, Chris, who did the little bit of camera work for me at the beginning. <laughs> I didn't have long arms. Uh, and yes, I do have legs. <laughs> you never see them. But yes, I do have legs. I'm not like Ironside. Um, okay, I've got a couple of minutes uh, to wrap up. So, tomorrow, on VT Talk, um, Dave has got Jerry Stimson on board. He is on. Um, I'm just looking across at my chat, um, and there's an Envy and a Jury Committee meeting tomorrow in the European Parliament, so there could be some fallout from that or some news from that. Um, so it's going to be a very much fly by the seat of your pants show tomorrow with anything that's coming up. Um, so it will be interesting. So make sure you tune in at 9 p.m for uh, VT Talk with Dave, Sav and Jerry Stimson as well as all the other bits and pieces of news. Um, and you'll probably hear about Jamie Vine and you'll probably hear about BBC Radio uh, Newcastle that was uh, Dave was on today, which was very good. Um, of course, the Hayes Hour on Thursday. The next Twitter bomb recipient will be tweeted on Saturday on Andy's show from 9pm. Dave <laughs> is he going to be here? I don't know. He's in Switzerland currently. Um, will he come back in time for Sunday at 9pm? Tune in and you will find out. The boys are back on Monday with Tin Your Tip and I am here as ever next Tuesday with Vapor Scene. Uh, and uh, until then, happy vaping. Peace out. Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.